Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Papa Boris, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to play Wingspan. If you're unfamiliar, Wingspan is what I would call a fairly complex resource management board game. It's about birds, and I'm using the newly released Wingspan app as my assistant in teaching you the rules. Now the point of this video is to show you the rules so you can decide if you want to buy the physical board game. The point of this video is not to review the app. I will just say I don't recommend the app. This is actually one of the most disappointing apps I've ever gotten um, for a board game, but that's a topic for another video. Let's go ahead and start up a game against the AI so that we can show you the rules. We're going to go ahead and do a three-player game here just for the sake of you know, not having too many players but also not being a two-player game, which is kind of weird and go ahead and fire it up. Okay, so here's how Wingspan works. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna receive five bird cards, five food tokens, and two bonus cards, and you have to make some starting choices from the stuff that you receive. By the way, this app, <laughs> just speaking of bad things about the app, it actually does the beginning of the game wrong. The way it's supposed to work is that everybody makes their choices simultaneously and then you select a starting player after everyone's made their choices. In this app, however, a starting player is chosen at the beginning and everybody makes their choices in player order. You are not, however, supposed to know what the turn order is when you're making these start of game choices. Any hoodle. Let's take a look at how this works. So there's a huge deck of bird cards which are at the heart of this game without getting into too much detail now. These bird cards just pretty much define how the game plays and that's one of the most charming aspects of the game. You get five of the bird cards to start with from this gigantic shuffle deck of bird cards and you also get five food tokens, one of each type. There's colloquially berries, fish, worms, rodents, and grain. These are like the things that you spend in order to play bird cards, which we'll talk about in more detail later, but just as a quick example, this Savannah Sparrow, to play it, you either have to pay a centipede or a grain. That's kind of how it works. Now the catch with this is that of these 10 things that you get, the five bird cards and the five resources, you only get to keep five. So at the extremes, you can keep five cards and no food, or all five food tokens and no cards, most of the time you'll probably take like two of one and three of the other or something along those lines. Now keep in mind for this video, I'm not playing strategically at all. All of my decisions are based solely on illustrating things. So to that end, I'm gonna keep cards that are designed to illustrate stuff. Please do not under any circumstances take anything in this video as like an indication of you know how to play the game well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these two bird cards for illustration, and we're gonna go ahead and keep these three resources. Now, while you're making this decision, there are some things that you're allowed to look at. There is a bird feeder, which will have five dice in it. The six sides of the dice are a worm, a grain, a berry. There's a fish side and a rodent side. So basically there's five sides, one for each of the five food resources. And the sixth side is a grain slash worm. So when you choose that die, you get to pick either a grain or a worm. This means that the worms and the grains are slightly easier to obtain than the berries, the fish, and the rodents. You're also allowed to look at the bird tray. There's the, all the cards that are not dealt to players at the beginning of the game are left in this shuffle deck, and three of them are laid out face up. This is similar to Ticket to Ride, as we'll see later when you're drawing cards. You can either draw random ones from the top of the deck, or you can choose from the ones that are face up. So you're allowed to look at what's available on offer when you're making your choices for what cards to keep and what food to keep. And you're also, again, allowed to look at the bird feeder as well when making your starting choices. Another thing that you're allowed to look at when making your starting choices is your bonus cards. At the beginning of the game, in addition to the bird cards and the food that you get, you also are given two bonus cards at random from the deck. And these are pretty familiar if you've played any number of other resource management board games. They're basically cards that give you points at the end of the game for meeting certain criteria. So for example, this one, birds that have the random food symbol give you two points each at the end, at the, end of the game. The feather symbol in this game, by the way, means points. Um, birds that eat berries, if you have two or three of them at the end of the game, you get three points. If you have four or more of them, you get seven points. And if you don't have any of them, or zero or one, then you'll get no points. So you kind of get how that works. And you get to look at this while you're making your decision for keeping the bird cards and the food. And you're also allowed to look at the food 
tray and the bird tray. So again, for illustration purposes, not for any other reason, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the omnivore export here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish that up. And so now the game begins. Now the way that this game works is that there are four rounds and in each round, beginning with the starting player and going clockwise, everybody takes turns one at a time until everyone has taken all their actions. At the end of the round, the first player token moves clockwise. So it's a different starting player at the beginning of every round. One neat thing about this game is that the number of available actions decreases by one every round. You have eight actions in the first round, but only seven in the second, six in the third, and in the fourth round and final round of the game, you only get four, or sorry, only get five actions. It goes eight, seven, six, five. So it's kind of cool. It means that as you get stronger and stronger, the number of total actions you get per round decreases and decreases, which prevents the game from dragging out as much as it would have otherwise. So my kudos to the developers of the game for implementing that feature. Okay, so what can you do on your turn? Well, one of four things. So the game does go generally pretty quickly because you choose one of four things to do. You do that thing, and then your turn is over. So let's talk about the main thing that you're gonna do in this game, which is play bird cards. This is a deceptively complicated action, so we're gonna be talking for quite a while here. Your game board is a five by three grid. This is kind of like your tableau, if you will, and you're gonna be playing bird cards onto this tableau over the course of the game. It's where most of your power will come from. It is, well, I should really say it's where all of your power is gonna come from. It's where your actions will improve, and it's where you're gonna score the bulk of your points. So let's talk about how to actually play a bird. Every bird has a whole butt ton of different things on it that you have to consider both when choosing what bird to play and once it's sitting in your game board. And also you have to look at your opponent's bird cards and what they're up to. There's like a lot of information here. So let's go down the line. In the upper left corner, which I can't show you in the stupid app because it has the fucking things bouncing around, there is a symbol which tells you what habitat that bird must be played in. The top row of your game board is the forest habitat. The middle row is, I don't know, the desert habitat, the brush habitat, who the hell knows. And then the bottom is the wetland habitat. So the Savannah Sparrow, for example, must be played, because you can see in the upper left corner, in the brush habitat. Whereas this one, the ruby-throated hummingbird, it can be played in any of them. See, it has a little picture of all three. So there are birds that must be played in one habitat. There are some birds that can be played in one of two habitats, like the Mississippi kite here, for example, it can go in either the forest or in the brush. And then um, there are some birds like this ruby-throated hummingbird that can go in all three. Also, you have the feather number. God, I really wish this app didn't suck. Anyway, uh, the there's a feather picture. Remember, feather in this game means points. So that's just how many points that bird is worth at the end of the game. Object of the game is to score the most points. There's a variety of ways to get points, but just the objective value of the bird cards is one of them. Down below that, you see a little a weird picture. Like this one looks like a bowl, and then the other one looks like a bunch of hexes. That's the type of nest that the bird has. And there are four types of nests. You got the bowls, you got the hexes, you got the pile of twigs that I can't zoom in on because this app sucks. And then there's also a thing that looks like, I don't know, like a, like a flag. It's like a, it's like that thing, actually. Like the, the country, it's like, a, like the Canada flag almost. Um, so anyway, actually, that's, that's not really, that's like more like the Japanese flag. Any hoodle, the point is it looks kind of like a country's flag. So those are the four different nest types. They don't inherently matter, but they do matter as you will see for scoring sometimes, they matter sometimes for the effects that the different birds have. Um, each bird also has, I kind of should have maybe expected this sooner, a cost that you have to pay in order to play that bird. So Savannah Sparrow, if you look in the upper left corner, to play it, you have to either pay a worm or a grain. The symbol with that like weird color wheel, that means you can pay any resource that you like to play that bird. And there are some birds that have slashes and some birds that have pluses. So the Savannah Sparrow, for example, has the slash between the worm and the grain. That means you either pay a worm or you pay a grain. This American Goldfinch, for example, which you can't really see because this app sucks, has a plus symbol. That means you have to actually pay two grains to play that one. This Lincoln Sparrow, you have to pay a worm and a grain, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The most expensive birds cost three resources to play. I've not seen a bird yet that cost more than three resources. And there are actually some birds that cost none. So that's kind of like a thing you have to keep in mind. Now, in addition to this, there is text. This is like what that bird does. And there's a variety of different things. There are some birds that just give you an effect when you play them. There are some birds that are in brown that give you an effect when you activate them, which we'll talk about what that is 
in a moment. There are some birds that have a pink text. We don't have any of those, but those are things that happen on other people's turns. And some birds don't have any effect at all. In addition, you also have at the bottom um, a number of little egg symbols. This is how many eggs that bird is allowed to lay. Eggs are spent for resources in some cases. They're also each worth one point at the end of the game, but you cannot have an egg unless you have a bird to put it on. So the total number of these egg symbols on your bird cards determine the total number of eggs that you as a player are able to have in your habitat. And this isn't like Agricola where you get a free animal in your house. You don't get a free egg. Only on your bird cards can you ever collect eggs. Uh, last thing I sh should have mentioned is this number, 18 centimeters here. Now this one says 79 centimeters for the Mississippi kite. That's the wingspan of the bird. It does not inherently matter, but it may matter for scoring, and it may matter for some bird's effects. So actually, for example, we happen to have this one. Um, no, we don't. Never mind. There are some cards that are like, draw a bird from the deck, and if its wingspan is less than some number, then you like get to keep it as a point at the end of the game. Stuff like that. So um, those are the main different effects of birds. Um, I'll go ahead and just play one. We'll go ahead and play this Savannah Sparrow in our brush habitat, and I'll choose to pay a worm for it, and that's my turn. Now, this thing has an effect. You can play a second bird in your brush, and you have to pay its normal cost. So I can actually also play this in the brush. However, when you're playing a bird, if you're playing it in the second or the third column, you also have to pay an egg. If you play a bird into the fourth column or into the fifth column, you have to pay two eggs. So eggs are very important for that as well. They let you play other birds in any place beyond the first column. Since I currently have no eggs, I can't take advantage of this power, which brings us to an important rule. All powers in this game are always optional. You never have to do anything. Here, I can't do this, but even if I could and didn't want to, I would not have to. We're just going to go ahead and skip that part of playing the bird. Okay, so that's one action is playing a bird. In some ways, that's the most complicated one because that is like the most important one. So I'll talk, hopefully talking about the other three is going to be a lot simpler. Okay, let's talk about getting food. When you choose to take food as an action, you basically get as much food as you're allowed to by the leftmost unopened or uncovered space in your forest habitat. So if you've not played any birds in your forest habitat, you just get one food die. If you manage to make it so that your first two spaces are filled, so that this is the leftmost unopened or uncovered one, you're gonna get two dice. If you manage to get all the way to here, you get three food dice. And then if you actually fill up all five spaces, you get three food dice over here, and you can also discard a card from your hand to get a fourth. So in the food row, you're either getting one die, two dice, or three dice, and in kind of like the in-between spaces, you're given the option to discard a card from your hand, that's the symbol, to get an extra die. So how does getting a die actually work? Well, the way it works is you choose one of the dice that are in the tray. So I'll choose, for example, to get another worm. The die is removed from the tray, but the die itself is not the resource. The die just tells you to take that type of food from the supply. And according to the rule book, the supply is unlimited. So there is no limit to how many total worms can be in the game. So the die is not sitting in the bird feeder anymore, but it's not the die that you actually spend to do stuff. It's the actual worm token that you'll put in your supply. So I'm gonna do that, and then that's my action. Easy peasy. So that's collecting food. Next, let's talk about laying eggs. As you might guess, laying eggs is the action associated with the middle row of your game board. And you will lay either one, or sorry, a two is the minimum, two, three, or four eggs, and in the in-between spaces, you can lay that number of eggs and also pay a food of any type to lay a third egg. So if I choose the laying eggs action, I can lay two eggs on my Savannah Sparrow, and I'll also pay a worm to lay a third egg, which I will also lay on the Sparrow, which fills up my Sparrow completely. And then I'm done with my turn. Just like with food, the number of eggs you lay and whether you can pay a food to lay an extra egg depends on what the leftmost uncovered space in your brush row is. So this is why it's useful to get a bunch of birds in one row. It permanently increases the power of that action for the entire rest of the game. The next action that you can take, and this is the fourth and final one, is to draw cards. When you draw cards, you might see where this is going. You look at your wetlands row 
and you do whatever is the leftmost uncovered space in that row. So either you draw one card, you draw a card and can pay an egg to draw a second, you draw two cards, you draw two cards and can pay an egg to draw a third, or you draw three cards, or if you've put a bird on every single space, you can draw three cards, and heck, you can even pay an egg to draw a fourth card. So if I choose this action right now, I will draw one card. Instead, just for illustration's sake, we're going to go ahead and play this ruby third hunting hummingbird. This one can be played in any habitat. I'll go ahead and, for illustration purposes, play it in my brush. So a couple of things have to happen. First, I have to pay a food of any type. I guess I'll go ahead and pay a fish. It's probably a stupid idea to do that, but I'll do it. So we'll do that. I also have to pay an egg because it's in the second column, and this is a really easy rule to forget about, and also really, really screws you over when you do forget about it. Because it's in the second column, I have to pay an egg to place it there. And remember to put it in the fourth column or the fifth column, you have to pay two eggs for that bird. That's why laying eggs, or among the reason, uh, is a very, very important thing. And so now for the rest of the game, I will just lay three eggs, if I have space, whenever I take the laying eggs action. Notice now that my bonus card is worth two points. Birds that eat a wild card food are worth two points for me secretly at the end of the game. And I've played one that is uh, a wild food eater. So it's not the ones that are in your hand that matter. It's the ones that are actually in your tableau. So now just to illustrate, I'll go ahead and draw a card. You can draw one of the face up cards or you can draw a card from the deck. So I'll go ahead and grab this guy, put him in the hand, and that's that. One thing that is kind of important is that when you draw cards, you do not refill as you go like you do in Ticket to Ride. So if you have, um, let's say, the ability to draw three cards and you take one, you don't get to see what its replacement is. So you have to keep taking the face-up ones or start drawing from the deck. At the end of your turn, if there are fewer than three cards in the offer, then you replace them for the next player. And now there's also a rule I didn't talk about for gathering food, which is you might have wondered, well, how do the dice in the bird feeder get replenished? So conveniently, this actually came up, so we'll go ahead and take the food action now. If, when you're drawing food for any reason, all the dice in the feeder are the same type, which can sometimes happen randomly, but is guaranteed to happen if there's only one die left, because, you know, if there's only one, they're all the same type, then you may, before you draw your die, re-roll all the dice and put them back in the feeder. So there was only one die left when I took this action, so I chose to re-roll, and now I'm going to be like, ah, oh, yes, I need lots of worms and grain. So I'll take one of these grain slash worm dice, I'll choose a worm from it, and that's my action. Okay, so that's the actions. Just to recap, you can play a bird, which has a whole bunch of shit involved, you can get food from the bird feeder, you can lay eggs on your birds, or you can draw cards from the bird offer or from the top of the deck. So what are the other rules that you have to know? Well, scoring. So what happens at the beginning of the game is you draw four random scoring cards, one for each round, which dramatically increases the game's variability and replayability. These things determine bonus points that are paid out at the end of each round before the next round starts. In this particular game, this is random. This is not what is always the case. Whoever has the most points, whoever, or sorry, whoever has the most eggs in the flag nests gets four points. And whoever has the second most gets one point. And third and last gets diddly. You can see that the points increase as you go along. So for example, in the fourth round, whoever has the most birds in the woods gets seven points, second most gets four points, and third most gets three. If you're a seasoned board gamer, you might be wondering, okay, what about ties? The way that ties work is that if there are two people tied for first, then you add the first and second point values, divide by two, and round down. So for example, if there was a tie for birds in the brush in the second round, you would take five plus two, which is seven, divide by two, which is three and a half, and round down to three. Each player involved in the tie would get three points. And then the third place player would still get one point. If three or more players are involved in the tie for first, then you add up all the point values and you divide by the number of players involved in the tie and again you round down. So if let's say three players are in a tie at the end, because let's say three players all filled up the woods so they're all tied, five birds in the forest, you would do seven plus four which is 11, 11 plus three is 14, divide by three, rounded down which is four, so all three of those players would get four points at the end of round four. But that's just one way to score points through these end of round bonuses. You also get points just on your birds, because remember, 
almost every bird is worth some number of points just by being in your habitat. You get points for fulfilling the requirements on your bonus cards. Every egg that is on a bird at the end of the game is worth two points. And you may also, it's called caching food or tucking cards. There are some birds that have you like collect food on them. There are some birds that have you collect cards under them. All that stuff is also worth points at the end of the game. So at the end of the game, whoever has the most points, when you add up their eggs, their bird values, their bonus cards, their end of round scoring, and then any other effects that they might have gotten from their birds over the course of the game is the winner. And that's Wingspan. And I may do a game or two against the AI. The app really sucks when you're playing against other people, so I'm probably not going to play against other people on my channel unless there's like a clamoring demand for it. Um, but yeah, that's the rules for Wingspan. Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't let the app turn you off because it really is an amazing board game. Thank you for watching. Please like and or subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody.